Greetings from Lapland. My name is Makapaya Shanakapo. In Finnish, it sounds a bit like this. Tavisia lapista namini an makakaya shanakapo. But everyone calls me Maki to make me sound more Finnish. By birth, I'm a New World Indian, or as we call it, First Nation. I was orphaned at an early age and raised by Swedish foster parents. Returned back to Sweden when I was in my late teens. I am proud that my real father was a community leader who hunted and fished in the Northwest Territory, Canada. My foster father was originally a Sami. Those indigenous reindeer herders living in northern Norway, Sweden and Finland. Not surprisingly, I embarked on an academic career examining the modernization of traditional societies. Currently, I lecture in tourism at the University of Lapland at Rovanami. As a researcher, I've traveled the world from Southeast Asia to South America. What fascinates me is the takeover of the world by corporations. Is there anywhere in the world you cannot buy a can of Coca-Cola or munch on a Mac burger? Being single and having no family, I spent most of my time researching and giving lectures and paying too little attention to my diet and health. I've also spent several sabbatical years in the United States at the University of Missouri. So I'm really aware about growing obesity pandemic. In my country, we're consuming more fast food and getting fat. And there's even a McDonald's in my own town, and it is the most northerly McDonald's in the world. And the first Starbucks opened in Helsinki last year. Did you know the Finns are the largest coffee drinkers in the world? How can indigenous cultures and cuisines survive in the world of McDonald's, KFCs and Pizza Huts, I wonder? This is why I'm now researching the loss of cultural identity under globalization and its impacts on the tourism industry. And also admit I've enjoyed a good few Big Macs and cans of Coke in my time. So I've also been thinking about how fast food and McDonald's hamburgers and fries have affected me. Earlier this year I visited my doctor for an annual checkup. I go back home to Gutenberg for these checkups and I've had the same doctor since my teens. I know I'm overweight, but my longtime doctor friend was really concerned this time at my obesity and that I'm now pre-diabetic. Obesity is defined from your BMI or body mass index. This is calculated from your height and weight. My BMI is 40 which is classified as obese class 2, or severely obese. I'm 1.71 meters in height and weigh 118 kilograms. On each visit, my doctor took photographs of me. He pulled out his file to show me these and how I've gained weight since 1975. Laughing, you can see those groovy haircuts of the 80s and 90s too. But I now need to lose 50 kilograms the size of a small person to not be overweight and simply to lose the label being obese requires a loss of 30 kilograms. That is the way to my German Shepherd dog. Can I blame the Big Macs for making me fat? I can clearly remember when McDonald's arrived in Canada and the first of many MacD meals. Americans are suing the giant multinational fast food companies for making them fat. This is partly based on how the company has targeted children in their marketing campaigns. In 1979, McDonald's introduced the first Happy Meals and with it came a cheap plastic toy. This was marketing that breakfast cereal manufacturers like Kellogg's had earlier pioneered to sell more of their products. McDonald's is now the world's largest toy distributor. One fifth of all MACD meals includes a toy. They also introduced a clown called Ronald, who encourages kids to nag their parents to take them to the nearest MacDees. But in Sweden and Finland there's no Ronald McDonald to prevent this type of subversive marketing to children. The final piece of marketing to children is to play at the play centres at McDonald's. Of course McDonald's would argue that often the only safe place to play in poor neighbourhoods is the building with the garden arches. When people started to file lawsuits at McDonald's, it opened up opportunities for corporations to be publicly examined. In 2004, Morgan Spurlock's film Super Size Me hit the main cinema screens 
and was a wake-up call for many people, and even more Americans are consulting their lawyers. Based on a month of eating nothing but McDonald's meals resulted in Morgan gaining more than 11 kilograms, a 13% increase in his body mass. This controversial documentary got refuted with other films that re-examined fast food, such as Fathead by Tom Norton. Eating at McDonald's and other fast food outlets, but limiting the amounts of high sugar sodas and high fat fries, Tom lost weight and improved his blood chemistry. McDonald's and other fast food outlets responded, introducing more healthy options like salad bars. In my next video, I'll investigate the McDonald's empire, its corporate social responsibility using the triple bottom line auditing. Until then, I will say bye, or as we say here in the north, Hey, hey.